clearly that's what's happened and it, it's here and so the headline on this video this should be a big article tomorrow uh, and i guess you're gonna probably write one uh, leo will post it at infowars.com we'll publish it uh the pope uh will resign in 2016 that's the headline well, if it goes to Argentina, because the problem is that they are trying to fix this trip in Argentina, is almost certain, almost, I mean, is even on the Wikipedia already about his pastoral trips for next year. If that is, con is confirmed, we can say for sure that he will announce his resignation when he visits his hometown in Argentina. Wow. Wow. So, insider, the Pope to resign next year on visit. That is amazing. And we will continue to break that down. I want to come back in the final segment, take a few calls for you. Uh, but the time we have left here uh, before we go to break, when we come back, I want you to answer this question. Break down, just, just in 30 seconds, what the 2030 plan is. And now since the world government is openly announced, where that's going when we come back. With Leo Zagami, best-selling author of the book, The Last Pope. You can see our interview with him in Rome on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com because for whatever reason, you know, 100% the Catholic Church is now under the control uh, of the multinational corporations and now does the bidding uh, of the one world government. You know, if those conspiracy theorists, that's just people that do research and question the establishment, are such a big joke, why is Hillary, Obama, the Pope, Constantly criticizing the people that, you know, it's a conspiracy theory that I want your guns, Obama said. That's why I'm going to try to ban a bunch of them. So they just play this game. But the truth is, people are listening all over the world. They know what's going on. And this pope is saying stuff 150 degrees, not 180, but close to the opposite of what previous popes said. And so something's going on here. First thing he said when he got in two and a half years ago was, Catholics obsessed too much on abortion. I went and looked it up, and he actually said it. So I want to take three or four phone calls here from Mike, Lewis, Stephen, and others. Leo Zagami finishing up, though. Clearly, world government's being announced. Everything we've talked about for decades is now just pretty much admitted. So I don't see how they segue from denying all this to now just admitting it all, but still saying we're discredited when we're not. Now that they've got their world government basically openly launching the TPP in place, all of it, what's the next shoe to drop? What they are planning is being done, first of all, in secret meetings that take place in uh, basically the birthplace, uh, the place where uh, we have the most holy saint for the Catholic Church, St. Francis. It's in Assisi that the UN meetings, the real UN meetings, go on. And it's in Assisi that in 1961, for the first time, they presented the rainbow flag that later on in 1978 will become then the gay rainbow flag. But I mean, we don't have anything against the gay people, like you said. I mean, myself, I have a lot of gay friends. But what we are saying here is hypocrisy and lobbyism. And, and of course, their agenda is to destroy the family values make everything that is normal not normal anymore uh, they are promoting things that are against nature well sure that's the thing i mean they're saying you can't say mother and father and actually banning it they want to ban us Yes, and uh, I mean, even on Italian TV, which is uh, it used to be quite Catholic, the main uh, channels are now uh, transmitting lesbian TV series and imposing their trans. Everything is really uh, completely outrageous what's happening also with the synod of the families. I mean, a synod of the families that ends up being a synod on the gay rights of the priests in the Catholic Church. That's right. The, the, the Catholic Church has its big family conferences, and then it's all about gays. Yeah, I mean, this is just the takeover of society. It's crazy. And at the same time, you have to understand that the Jesuits are planning behind closed doors uh, things that are much more uh, delicate, like, for example, the insurgency and what's happening in Turkey at the moment. They are directly involved in what's happening in Turkey at the moment. Uh, what's happening with that terrorist attack? Well, I mean, forget the, the, the whole PKK thing. I mean, what they have done there, if you want, I can explain it to you. It's uh, manipulated by the ISIS, basically is being attacked by the Kurds. And so to revenge that, the ISIS, we know who is behind ISIS, they had to attack this peaceful and rally. And now they blame it on the Kurds. 
And they blame it, of course, after on the Kurds. But uh, sure, that's clearly people, what's happening in Turkey. But uh, the, uh, what people don't know is the intelligence agency in Turkey is now controlled by Fethullah Gulen, who is an henchman, an agent of the Jesuits, who wrote a book where his preview was made by Thomas Michel, who is a Jesuit. So they are quite open, the Jesuits, by taking over also Islam with the, the whole Chris Islam thing. Oh, we got to so, go to calls. Absolutely. It's just crazy. Clearly, the, the EU, the Vatican, radical Islam, it's all combined now to bring in the world government. Uh, and it is so f just over the top. Mike in South Carolina, you're on the air with Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Hello, I can't hear anybody. Okay, we're on oh. the air, brother. Go ahead. I apologize. Sorry. Okay, um, I just had two quick questions, if I may, to ask of Leo. Um, I'm Catholic, but I'm more the kind to listen to Bishop Richard Williamson or <clears throat> Father Paul Kramer than listen to Jorge Bergoglio. I just wanted to ask um, Leo if he's ever heard of the uh, claim by Father Malachi Martin about the enthronement of the fallen angel Lucifer ceremony that took place inside one of the chapels in 1963 in the Vatican. If that's, if, and if he has, is that valid? Interesting say, question, Mike. Go ahead. Yes, I would say that the work that Father Malachi did himself, he was a Jesuit. Uh, let's not forget that and he was very close to the Israeli Mossad but definitely he brought for the first time out to certain truths about Satanism in the Vatican and the ritual he described unfortunately is true well and Mike I wasn't trying to be rude I'm just this phone system people don't hear when we go to him and it annoys me it's not you I'm annoyed with anything else you wanted to ask Mike <clears throat> the only other thing I want to ask him um, and he probably has uh, Leo Antonio Sochi's book Nona Francisco do you have you heard of that Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, focuses, Sochi focuses on the validity of the election of Francis, stating that at the fifth election, basically, there was one vote extra that shouldn't have been there. So basically, Pope Francis is not legally or even by the canon law of the Vatican, uh, the Pope. Uh, he's just a figure because the elections are not valid. And this is true. Plus, how do you have two popes? I appreciate your call, uh, Mike. Lewis in Chicago, you're on the air with Leo Zagami and Alex Jones. Uh, there's, there's two prophecies uh, regarding the papacy and the pope uh, that uh, the church has placed a lot of credibility in. And that's the third secret of Fatima, which Pope John Paul II himself revealed and put credibility in in 1999. And also the prophecies of St. Malachi, who was an Irish bishop in the 11th century. And this is the last pope on his list of popes. And I'm wondering if um, if uh, your guests can comment on these two prophecies, how they might relate to what's going on today. That's right. I mean, I've studied this. Aren't there a lot of prophecies saying this was going to happen and now it's happening? I mean, is that the elite following those as a script or is it real? Absolutely. What uh, was said in Fatima is very important because then it also connected with the attempted murder of John Paul II by Ali Akcha. And Ali, Ali Akcha himself said that a massive attack, probably even a nuclear attack, would be done to, uh, in 2017 when the Fatima uh, appearance will celebrate 100 years. Right in May 2017, there should be this uh, is terrorist attack to the Vatican, which is quite credible. I mean, Ali Akcha himself was armed by, by but of course, he was armed uh, not knowing who were his real handlers. Uh, and in the end, when he understood, he was uh, uh, really a bit uh, shocked himself, because apparently his real handlers came from inside the Vatican. Wow. Okay, Lewis, great question. Stephen in Austin, Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead, Stephen. Alex, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And I wanted to give you a quick thank you, but a little different one than you're probably used to. Thanks thanks for taking time away from your family to uh, do this on Sundays. I love listening to your show during the week and the Sunday shows. Well, but thanks for putting up with me, brother. Being away. You're awesome. Thank yeah, you. And, 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 and more importantly, thank, thanks to your wife for being uh, you know taking care of the home front so that you can be out here doing this because we all uh, become dependent upon the information you provide. Thank you, brother. Uh, so real Real quick on that. Hey, secondly, by the way, Leo uh, by far has the coolest accent of anybody on your show, so just <laughs> hands down. <laughs> hey, quick quick question from just a common sense Christian perspective for you, Leo. Yes. I, I'm not Catholic. I'm Protestant, uh, Lutheran uh, in particular, and I'm, I'd be very curious what Martin Luther would think today of the shenanigans going on in the world. But 
all, all things being equal with Francis and previous popes, etc., none of them are perfect. We all know that. Uh, they're all human, uh, <clears throat> as, as we all are. But it seems like the goods do weigh, outweigh, rather, the bads. And it does seem like in, in the world we live in, where there's just such gluttony and selfishness and you know, immediate need for, for uh, return on investment and the sense of entitlement, it does seem like the Catholic Church does still stand as a bastion of following the teachings of Christ. And so I guess my question is, do you think he's a willful idiot or just a naive pawn? It, it does seem sure, like does he believe in the intention. socialism he spouts? It, exactly. Right. So I'd be very curious what Leo's thought is. Great question. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the kind words. I, I'm humbled by the great audience. God bless you. Go ahead, uh, Leo. First of all, I will question the fact that he's a Lutheran because he talked more like a Catholic. I mean, it's okay that... Because, in fact, Luther, Lutero has uh, uh, even a square now named in his name, thanks to the Vatican in Rome. So there is no uh, Protestantism anymore. Everything is uh, uh, controlled by the Jesuits. And I think that what they are doing is just a nice show. Uh, don't fall for what they're saying. The teachings of Christ are not reflected in this church. And this is clear by their actions more than by their words. Well, look... Uh uh, the stuff being taught by a lot of Protestant churches is, is even worse. I mean, I'm not picking on Catholics here. Clearly, though, this pope's getting behind world government. This pope's pushing yeah, yeah. austerity. One thing is what you say and one thing is what you do. I mean, this pope is an actor. And I mean, what, what, what he says is, of course, uh, very pleasing. Sure, to sure. Leo, we're out of time. Thank you for staying up late in Rome. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. We'll be back tomorrow, folks, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Actually, to 3 p.m. now. We added the fourth hour with the radio broadcast. God bless you all. We're just here to try to expose the world government being formed.